looks like an ordinary model train, but it's not. There's a TV camera inside. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Welcome to our holiday video gift guide. It's back. Siskel and Ebert's holiday video gift guide with Gene and Roger showing you the newest in electronics, toys and games, plus the latest home videos, and lots of movie gift ideas for the holiday season. When I was a kid, I always wanted a train for Christmas, and one Christmas, I got one. I always thought we should have a TV set, and finally we did. But if I'd ever received a train set that had a built-in TV camera, it might have been too much for one little kid to handle all at the same time. But that fancy new train set is only one of the new gifts from the world of video that we're going to be previewing, reviewing, field testing, and criticizing on the second annual edition of Siskel and Ebert's Holiday Video Gift Guide. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. It is probably the wildest gift offered this year, combining the old and new of toys, model trains, and video cameras. Here from Lionel is its RailScope video camera system, an engine with a camera mounted on the front that sends a live picture of what it sees in black and white on its trip. Roger, you're the engineer now. Here goes the train. The camera is mounted right on the front. When it comes around here, Roger, I want you to stop it. There's a little horn. Stop the train, please. Stop How's it. That? I like ordering you around. Okay. okay. Here. Right here is the camera. Right up there. And this is the train. And actually, it's quite easy to put back because I'm a mechanical clod. And I'm going to do this Watch live. Watch for the third rail, Gene. Wouldn't want to lose you. Let it rip, big guy. I can't because you don't have it on the third rail. It won't move. Come on. Okay. You still don't have it right. Come on, sweetheart. You gotta put the wheels on the rail. Go, baby. It still doesn't go. I can now move it by it hand. Along. I can push move it, it by hand. Chug it's it, an electric it. train. Here, look. I don't look think you this. turned it look on right. I've got it on. You go see if I don't have it on. Here, look. See? Yeah, I hope I don't get an electrical shock. Yeah, take your time. Maybe. We only have an hour special here. Okay, now it should work. Let's see. If it works, I'm gonna die. Thank you very much. The defense rests. <laughs> Lionel Rail Scope System, $250 to $350 for these engines. And you also need a human being who's able to operate them. Roger and I are obviously not capable. The model you're seeing now is the midsize O gauge, costing $300. Obviously, having the camera requires you to build a great layout for your train to travel through, which is great for Lionel, but it will dent your wallet. But assuming that you can handle the money, if not the train, uh, who is this toy for? That's my question. The train freak or the video nut? I say it's for the model train lover because they already have the scenery. A video fan will have to be motivated in building such a train set up from scratch to make this expensive doodad work. Roger still can't you do know, it. One of the well, hang on, I just got a little okay. more to talk about. Okay. The bottom line for me on this baby is it's a great gift for the model engineer in your life, but it is not a great gift for a video person. Now, here is the problem with this train, because you give it what to What do you think about what I just said? I just said that this is a gift that would be good for someone who has a model train, yes. but it is not a good gift for a video file. Do you agree with that or disagree? Well, uh, obviously, I, I think that's probably true. Because Thank you, you very if, much. If you, had, if you had a real neat layout, then this, this would, would be, be nice at the engineer's point of that's view. That's my point. But you know what would happen if you give this to a kid, of course. Because what happens I know is what they're the gonna... signal goes through the TV set. Yes. And you can make a VCR recording of what yes. the engineer sees. Yes. The first thing any kid is going to do <laughs> is stage a big crash where the train right. goes right off the table and all the way through the living They'll room. They'll put their little brother or sister right up here on the That's train. That's right. And, and $500, the $500 the... of uh, rail equipment up in flames so they can play the video over and over again. You know what I'd like to see them do with this technology? What? Put it in a model airplane. Wouldn't well, that be terrific? Well, it, the bird's eye view? Yeah. The only question is, I think there it could go so fast that you wouldn't be able to have the camera focus. It would require a very sophisticated camera. And if you don't think that baby would crash and burn, then I don't think you understand. Yeah, a heck of a scenario. videotape. Another category of video gift this holiday season is the interactive video game. A game you can play using a videotape on your home VCR and sometimes also using a board and playing pieces or some other gimmick. The interactive, the interactive game I want to play with right now, however, is a play-along version of the popular TV show Wheel of Fortune. This is a battery-operated console that works in a couple of different ways. For example, while you're actually watching Wheel of Fortune on TV, the word puzzle on the show itself is loaded into your console so you can try to beat the players in guessing the mystery words. 
or you can tape Wheel of Fortune and play it back later, also trying to outguess the contestants. <laughs> you can also make up your own Wheel of Fortune questions, Gene. You've always wanted to do this, yeah. and challenge your friends to try to solve them. I think now, one I puzzle have... would be I'd come up with is start the engine. That would be a good puzzle, wouldn't it? Because well, we couldn't listen, do it. If you could start it, you go right ahead. You All know, right, I will. You want to be the engineer? I'll hide while you're I'm talking going about to demonstrate this. how this game works. You see? What you do is you start out. Now there they are. They're playing. Oh, there's Vanna. I okay, see now I push on. That's very important. Yeah, and then thing. I push enter. See, it says aim at TV. Yeah. And now it loads. There's a signal on the on the TV. Believe yeah. it or not, that comes over the TV from Wheel of Fortune. They put this signal on underneath Vanna. You know, is right. kind of the secret signal. Yeah, I bet. It loads into this machine. Yeah. And now you see. Okay, so I put T. Yeah. And now on my don't you get a chance? Yeah, I get a chance, but you, you see... you got to wait your turn while the other people are playing. Oh, first I forgot to spin or something. Okay, I'll say. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's been one of you your problems in your entire okay. life. Uh, enter. Okay, players, number one. Okay, aim at TV. Uh, right. And now it's got two T's up there. Yeah, we saw and, that. Yes. <laughs> and it's supposed to <laughs> Roger, have two TVs right here, too. Can you do so anything right? Wait a minute. And then... You can't see? play the okay, game. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to solve I'm the puzzle. I'm turning it on again. I'm entering it. Oh, I can tell you what it is. It's a regular heartbeat, obviously. Uh, you've already seen this one. You saw this. You <laughs> anyway, screened the show in There he is. <laughs> oh, that's it. Anybody can see that. Look you, at it. It you, says a regular you, heartbeat. Come you, on. You screened Wait a minute. See, the look. There's, a, there's the T's. I know. I understand. But you see, when you enter, and then you go T. Let me ask you something. Point. And Forget this now. Forget see, this, this now. People not... want advice. Okay. You played with this game before. You already looked at yes, the Yes, I did. That's how yes, you knew I played with it, yes. What do you think? Would you buy it, or would you buy it? Well, see, the problem with this game is it does for you at a cost of a about eighty dollars what you can do for free by watching wheel of fortune I mean, everybody i know yeah you sit at home and you're looking and you're trying to gather what the uh, word is right and you can do that without this game so you don't need this game okay unless perhaps answer. you want to make your own puzzles and then i'm going to stump you with my words and you're going to stump me with yours i think which i get old real fast i think i got the answer that i okay. wanted let's keep going i must say in all fairness to this game yeah. that in fact it does work i have seen it work i cannot make it work <laughs> the train won't move but nevertheless i know that in okay. theory it works so on okay. these two products so far that we're talking about the train for train engineers, yes. but you don't need this if no, you like to play along. TV for free, right. Okay. Coming up next, a list of good recent movies now on video, and then a little later in the show, a demonstration of an invention that once belonged to science fiction, the two-way picture phone. What do Hollywood stars want for the holidays? We asked Terry Garr. Well, I'd either like Giant, because it's the story of this poor guy that becomes rich, or Cinderella, and which is the same thing with a different sex. In movie theaters, now they're available on tape. You can rent them first if you want before you buy them just to test them out, but I think you're going to like them. I really like the remake of an old detective story called DOA, with Dennis Quaid playing a man who had been poisoned, has 24 hours to live, find his killer, and perhaps save his own life. No! Yesterday you pop up all over my life, today I have no life! What are you trying to do? Stop it, just please stop it, just please. That's Meg Ryan with him. One of my favorite films of this year, in any category, was George Roy Hill's Funny Farm, with Chevy Chase and his wife, played by Madeline Smith, leaving the city for a dream life in rural Vermont. Wait. This is the first real house. I'm going to carry you in. No! I heard that. Nonsense, your light is a feather. <laughs> Jeez! Oh, 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 honey! I also liked last year's Back to the Beach, the beach party parody with Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello, this time as parents. Sandy! Sandy, if you've got a guy in there, I'm gonna cut off his toes and sell him to the bait shop! Listen, this is my house, too, and it will not be driven out. Oh, Dad, my hands are cozy! A very smart script that wasn't just a remake, rather a nostalgic updating of Fun in the Sun. Three light but fine entertainments for the holidays, and if I had just one of those to get for the holidays, I would take Funny Farm. I love that you movie. You know, I picked Funny Farm, too, and I'll tell you why. It's the underdog. The other yes. two got good reviews. Funny Farm was dumped on by most of the critics except for us, and I thought it was funny. I know that picture will last. It is a classic. 
Hope you're right. Now let's look at my list, and it begins with a movie named Vice Versa, which was one of no less than four movies released in the last couple of years that all dealt with more or less the same theme, an adult trapped in a child's body, child trapped in an adult body, body switch of some sort. The sleeper in this category of all four, I think, was Vice Versa, starring Judge Reinhold and Fred Savage in a comedy about reversed identities. The Jingle Bell Moose, Marshal, we've been getting complaints. What's the problem? What's the problem? Wow! It said what I said! My second holiday movie choice is Inner Space, which came out at the beginning of last summer and died at the box office, maybe because nobody could understand what it was about. Here is the crucial scene you must understand. At this moment in the movie, a tiny microscopic capsule has been accidentally injected into the wrong man played by Martin Short. The capsule has been shrunk to the size of a molecule, but it contains a real living man who was inside the capsule and marooned in the wrong body. The astronaut in reverse was played by Dennis Quaid. Firing optic sensor. And my third choice for a good holiday movie is Extreme Prejudice, a 1987 film that starred Nick Nolte as a sheriff along the Mexican border who's fighting a personal war with a drug smuggler played by Powers Booth. I got a feeling the next time we run into each other, we're gonna have a killing. It's just a feeling. One of the reasons I liked Extreme Prejudice so much was that every performance in the movie was first rate and that made the action scenes even more believable. Another one was that the movie looked and felt like one of those great old westerns in which you had good and you had evil and you didn't have a lot of complications in between. But you know, my favorite of these three I, is Inner Space. Inner Space. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. That, that film, and I, I think if they can figure out what it is, Martin Short does a great job, Dennis Quaid does a great job, rediscover that picture. Now let's say you don't relish the idea of buying a movie for someone else because you're not sure of their taste. That's a legitimate concern. You don't want to pick out somebody's artwork for them. You might not want to pick out their movies. Well, Roger and I have come up with a movie gift list for the hard to please. Yeah, we had some fun with this one. We made up lists of the problems that each one of your potential friends <laughs> presents when you're in the video store. For example, first category, what do you give to the total movie buff, the freak, the friend who lives, dreams, sleeps, and eats movies? And my answer is, you give him the Criterion Collection's Laserdisc edition of The Magnificent Ambersons, a movie by Orson Welles that is often voted one of the best movies of all time and was recently voted the best laser disc of all time. But as every movie buff knows, the ending of the film has changed before it was released, and this laser version does everything possible to restore what you've missed. It includes a beautiful print of the film, Orson Welles' original radio show, The Magnificent Ambersons, two interviews with Orson Welles, and an early silent movie version of The Magnificent Ambersons. And frankly, it's impossible to think of anything else they could have included in this package except maybe one of Orson Welles' old Havana cigars. I own this disc. I bought it myself. It's one of the great classics because here is the famous butchered movie mm -hmm. which someone has painstakingly tried as best they can to put together. Mm -hmm. It's a great gift. Now, what about for the person who says, I don't like movies? What film could you possibly give them that would win them over for sure? I think it would be very hard for anyone to resist Singing in the Rain, most everyone's favorite musical, a great parody as well as celebration of Hollywood. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning. Good morning to you. That good morning number, <laughs> irresistible. Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. Who could resist that? And it's a film that's available both on tape and disc that can be played over and over, as with most musicals. It's like playing a favorite record again and again. People wonder about buying these tapes, and if it's a musical, you will play it more often, I think. You know, on those mornings during the year when I have a real hard time getting started, sometimes I just put on good morning, you know, as I'm dancing around in my shower. It doesn't really work, but it's a nice idea. Well, you have to look out of the shower to see the screen. Problem. Yes, I'm just listening. Oh. Now, the ideal gift for people who might look at more foreign films, they say, except that they have trouble with subtitled movies. Oh, I'd, I'd like to see a French film, but I don't like to read subtitles. Well, give them a good widescreen foreign movie in a letterbox format with the subtitles unbelievably to e easy to read because they're down at the bottom of the screen. For example, here's a scene from Fellini Satyricon, the bizarre 1969 fantasy by Federico Fellini, which was shot in spectacular widescreen, but has until now been seen with half of its original picture chopped off at the sides. I capolavori che vedi in questa pinacoteca denunciano il letargo attuale. Una pittura così oggi non la sa fare nessuno. Now, how could anybody resist subtitles after seeing those? It's totally revolutionized 
foreign films on home video. That's the way to see subtitled movies. Here's another tough category. The person who has given up movie going and hasn't seen one in, say, 20 years. As was Singing in the Rain from 1952, I defy you to find someone who wouldn't be entertained by the 1982 comedy Tootsie, an old-fashioned entertainment in the best sense of the word, with Dustin Hoffman's great double performance as a struggling actor and a struggling actress. <laughs> Dorothy? You Dorothy? Dorothy? Oh, wait, 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 let me explain. No, no, please don't say anything. But there's reason. Uh, I understand the no, reason. No, 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 that reason's not the reason. See, I'm not the person you think I am. Hoffman's great. I think it's Jessica Lange's best work in a small role, and Sidney Pollack directs and also acts very cleanly. A wonderful classic film. And it seemed like an impossible project. They pulled it off. And a perfect comedy. The next category that we've come up with, the perfect gift for the person who absolutely cannot stand sex or violence in the movies. Yeah. My recommendation, a 1941 comedy by Preston Sturgis named The Lady Eve, which is one of the greatest slapstick comedies of all time. It stars Henry Fonda as a rich, young, young man who has just returned from a snake collecting expedition in the jungle. And Barbara Stanwyck is a professional gambler and confidence woman who falls in love with him while she's trying to con him. Now, I'm married, it's going to be somebody I've never seen before. I mean, I won't know what he looks like or where he'll come from or what he'll be. I want him to sort of take me by surprise. And that movie ends with one of the greatest final lines. In the right. 30s and 40s, they love to have the last line. That is a great last line. It's a wonderful picture. Also, it has a great kiss in it. So uh, for yes, the person does. who doesn't like sex or violence, they actually get a little sex, but the sanitized sex that's so nice. All right, now what about a person who loves sex and violence? My pick would be an early film by Nicholas Rogue, who's often preoccupied with those subjects. The film is called Don't Look Now, a sexy thriller set in Venice with Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie as parents searching for the ghost of their drowned daughter, or so it seems. Less mysterious is the famous early scene that intercuts sex and getting dressed. Don't Look Now is an almost enthusiastically decadent movie. Thoughtful, puzzling, surprising, that scene goes on. It's from 1973, the same year, oddly enough, as Last Tango in Paris, another film that would qualify for this category, but a more obvious choice. Movies have gotten sexually tame in the last 15 years, haven't they? That's what I learned searching out a tape for this category. They're certainly tame now compared to the 70s. You know yeah. you have a stop action thing on your video machine, you right. can have fun with that movie, because the killer at the end turns up in a red raincoat, right. and to prefigure that, Nicholas Red, has something red yeah, just to the right of center in every single scene. A toothbrush, a poster, a towel, just kind of subliminal. That's the way to enjoy movies. Kind of interesting. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at vintage television programs. Most of all, I remember Mama. Well, I'd like a cassette of The Moon is Our Home, starring Margaret Sullivan and Henry Fonda. You're looking at three of the most famous dummies in the world, Edgar Bergen's Charlie McCarthy and a couple of his friends. And they're here, and I'm here, in the Museum of Broadcast Communications in Chicago. There are a number of these museums that have opened around the country as we begin to properly celebrate our heritage of vintage television. Speaking of vintage televisions, we have one right here, a giant circle screen, 12-inch, the Zenith from 1949. And one of the great things now about home video is you can rent or buy quite cheaply vintage television shows. And I'm going to start with one from 1949. The first show that I can remember, I was three years old, that made an impact on me. It's called Mama. Well, what's a grass widow? They're looking for children to know. Well, you're a widow, and I know that. Well, I'm not the same kind of widow that Mrs. Jean through this. But that generally means that maybe Mrs. Marsh and her husband are divorced. Oh. And so we learn about the word divorce, taboo, in 1949. And we also learn another thing, which is about the constant popularity of the American family in television history, be it the Scandinavian family, the Nelson family, the Ricardo family, or the Cosby family of today. Another vintage video is Ding Dong School from 1952, a TV program for kids hosted by a much-beloved teacher named Dr. Frances Horwich. Her approach, if you watch it closely, is very similar to another popular educator of children today, Mr. Fred Rogers. You've been having a very good time together. Oh, I am. I'm so glad. Yes! What's remarkable about seeing this tape is that she seemed really glad that we had a good weekend. That was my recollection of her, and as a child, it holds up today. 
That's the value of buying these vintage tapes. Another series that I liked from 1952 as well was Ramar of the Jungle, starring John Hall. He was my Indiana Jones, my Raiders of the Lost Ark. He played Ramar, a scientist adventurer in Africa, and one of my favorite episodes was called The Crocodile Gods of Ka. There it is. Brother, I'm glad we don't have to cross that river. Did you ever see so many crocodiles? What's funny about Ramar of the Jungle is unlike Mama and Ding Dong School, this show absolutely terrified me. I used to watch this from a distance of about 20 feet, peeking around a wall to look at the screen when those crocodiles came on. There was another episode involving pythons, and I thought that they would be coming out of trees at me as I walked home from school. Uh, so I guess when you revisit your childhood, you revisit the fuzzy warm moments, and you also revisit the fears, the exciting fears, all available on home video. I had a good time there. And at the end of this show, we'll give you the addresses of the places where you can buy those tapes or other TV shows from your childhood. A lot of them are for rent in the larger video store. If you right. know the one I wish they'd bring back is Which Captain one? Video. Oh, he's great, the Video he was, Ranger. Yeah, he was on for 15 minutes every night after school. And the great thing was whenever they got into turbulence in outer space, yeah. where of course there's a vacuum, so there isn't any turbulence, they always just shake the camera up and down, you know. <laughs> well, he's, Captain Video is now appearing in all those Ovaltine commercials now, mm -hmm. so he's back. His la latest and greatest adventure. There are a lot of other good videos, specialized videos, that sometimes get overlooked. And this season, there are two videos in particular that I think are absolutely wonderful gift items. The first one has the curious title, The Best of Blank. And this is a video by the legendary American documentary filmmaker, Les Blank, who makes films about two things, American music and American food. This one contains nothing but musical high points from some 20 of his documentaries about regional and ethnic American music, including Clifton Chenier and his Louisiana Zydeco band. from 1967, this nostalgic footage of a hippie love-in from the movie God Respects Us When We Sing, But He Loves Us When We Dance. Another gift possibility this year has got to be one of the most amazing single tapes or discs I've ever seen. It's called Voyager, the Voyager Gallery, and it's the film of a journey through the solar system, a movie created artificially out of thousands and thousands of the still photos that were taken by the Voyager spacecraft on its journey past all of our neighboring planets. Now look at this absolutely mind-blowing footage of the spacecraft as it actually passes through the rings of Saturn. One side of this disc has thousands and thousands of still photographs. The other side is movies from outer space with a musical soundtrack, a great music video, if you will. Those are not special effects. It's not animation. Those are actual photographs of the rings of Saturn. And a movie, if you stop to think about it, is simply 24 frames a second. So all they did here was take thousands of individual still frames that were sent back by Voyager, and they made a movie of a flight through the solar system. Simple, but a great idea. And it is absolutely mesmerizing. Now, here are a couple of more specialized videos, more down to earth. They're best sellers, so I wanted to check them out and see if they're worth buying. The first one I took a look at is called Super Kalinetics. The original is Kalinetics, and it's one of the best selling tapes ever released. Well, it turns out that this Super Kalinetics is an exercising tape involving some surprisingly difficult but effective stretching exercises. Take the arms out to the side, perfectly straight. Slowly start rolling the hands forward to where the thumbs are facing forward. Gently take them in back of you, trying to keep your hands even with your shoulders. Hit That's not an easy exercise to do. I tested it out. I've got great underarms now. I still wear a sport jacket. After working out, you will be hungry, so you can cook with Martha Stewart. In her antipasto tape, among other things, she shows you how to roast peppers. Put your pepper directly on the gas flame. Keep turning the pepper so that you blacken the skin completely. I happen to like the appetizers in most restaurants more than most main courses, and this tape shows you how to throw an appetizer party. 
Maybe you want to throw an appetizer at a main course party. Martha Stewart likes to marinate a lot of things, and that takes up time. Up to three days to marinate out. You didn't know this. Three days to marinate artichokes? Everybody knows that, Gene. No, You're you, probably the no. only person who didn't know you that. You didn't know that. You're lying. I can tell. You also need a grill for a lot of her cooking. I she is that. not particularly charismatic on screen, but I suspect the food that you can produce with this tape is very good if, as she constantly reminds you, you buy it fresh. A recipe book is included. This is a valuable tape. I shouldn't make too much You're going to marinate an artichoke for three days, and it better be fresh before you start. I agree with you. Okay. Right. Okay. When we come back, I'd like to invite you down to my basement, where we will not be marinating artichokes, but instead we'll be looking at one example of a state-of-the-art home video system. Godfather 1 is probably, might be the greatest picture I've ever seen, so I'd, I'll take that. Escal and Ebert's Holiday Video Gift Guide. This is a movie on Laserdisc, and Laserdisc, for my money, is the best way to watch movies on home video. I'd like to invite you down to my basement right now for a look at my laser vision setup. So come on in and make yourself at home, and I'm going to show you a great home video system. And it's not in here because this is the living room, and I'm hardly ever in the living room. I spend about half of my life down in the basement looking at videos. So come right this way, and what you do is turn left at the vacuum cleaner. And look out for the last step. So here we are in the Orson Welles room, also known as my basement. And this is a great place to look at home video. I have a couple of rows of couches here. This is a 45-inch screen. I'm going to stop the picture right now and show you some of my equipment. This is my notion of an ideal home video system. This is a 45-inch screen, and I wanted a 50-inch screen, but they couldn't get it down the stairs, so they had to take it back to the store and bring the 45-incher. But I believe that anyone with any kind of a large TV screen needs laser vision in order to get a good picture on the screen because it gives you a lot more definition. Of course, I have VHS. I have two machines right here. I don't have beta because I think beta has just about had it, regrettably, in the marketplace. But there's a consolation for that, and that is that laser vision is so much better than beta or any kind of tape-based system. This is an example of the kind of laser disc machines that are out on the market this Christmas from several different manufacturers. Now, you may have heard of the new combi players, so-called because they play every known laser format, CD, CD video, movies on laser disc, and so forth. I don't have one of those because all I wanted was movies, and so I got this machine that plays laser disc movies. Look at the laser disc. I think they're so beautiful. It kind of looks like, uh, you know, what they would eat off of uh, in the spaceship in Close Encounters. And uh, you have one disc goes here, and then the other disc comes out here, so that you can put, load two discs at the same time. You don't always have to be getting up and going over to the machine in order to, uh, uh, to work it. And then up here is my receiver. This is the stereo receiver that works for the television, for the VHS decks, and also for laser vision. And on here, I have a lot of nice little buttons I can push. I can have Dolby Stereo uh, surround sound. I can have stadium sound if I'm listening to a rock concert, studio sound for ordinary movies, simulated stereo for tapes that are in mono. And I can turn it up real, real loud, which is lots of fun. I have two big floor speakers here in the front. And then in the back of the room, I have two speakers up by the ceiling. So I get true surround sound. And when I'm listening to a movie like Raiders of the Lost Ark, the sound is coming from all around. That's a lot of fun. Now, this is the remote device for laser vision, and it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it, which I'd like to show you right now. You can have a lot of fun with these laser vision players if you're a movie fan or somebody that likes to see how these films are put together and how the special effects works. For example, here, I'm going to turn on Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Steven Spielberg picture, and one of the trivia pieces of information that a lot of laser vision fans know is that in this scene, where Harrison Ford has just been dropped into the snake pit, you can see the reflection of the snake's face in a supposedly invisible pane of glass between the Cobra and Harrison Ford. Or at least you think you can see it, and you run it forward, and you run it back, and you freeze a frame, and you freeze another frame, and your friends get up, and they go home, and they go out for sandwiches, and they never come back to your house again, and you're still there backing it up and putting it forward and playing with the special effects, because you can have a lot of fun doing that with these movies. I told you it would be all right! <laughs> Here's a close-up of the little gadget I was playing with. This outer wheel backs the movie up or advances it quickly. Use the little wheel to do it more slowly. Here's still frame and chapter search and alternate soundtracks. And this little button right here, Gene, is the one that I use to 
open my garage door with. You don't even have a garage. But if I did. All right. Well, now, a lot of people, I have a laser vision machine. I love it. Better sound, better image quality. Uh, but people think this is an out-of-date mechanism. That's because of the RCA thing. Yeah, RCA had a system they advertised all over television that played movies with a needle. Mm -hmm. It was crummy technology. Yes. It's obsolete. It doesn't exist. What a laser disc is is essentially a CD that has a whole movie on it. If you understand that principle, you're home free. Yeah, understand the other principle. Better sound, better visual quality. What more can you ask? Now, what to play on your laser disc machine? There are thousands of titles available, including three new ones I'm fond of, starting with E.T., which is much sharper on disc, and Steven Spielberg has said so himself. on LaserDisc, Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest, and look what you get here. Hitchcock would sketch out his scenes on storyboards, and look how they show you how it translates into the actual scene. A more current LaserDisc release of a Hitchcock-like film is Roman Polanski's Frantic from last year. Harrison Ford plays an American tourist in Paris who loses his wife the whole film is a study of terminal jet lag. He's exhausted and confused. I have witnesses. My wife was kidnapped. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, yes, of course. But what would you like us to do exactly? I want you to find my wife. Frantic is an underrated film. It's available on tape right now for $89.95, $39.95 list for disc. The tape price will probably come down, but the discs typically come out with lower prices. Another reason is, if you needed one, to invest in a laser disc. One company, Warner Brothers, is bringing out discs now at $24.95, Beetlejuice, $24.95 disc, $89.95 tape. So right. it is a bargain. Now it's my turn to pick three new laser discs that represent the impressive things that are possible with a laser medium. And my first choice is an obvious one. I've been waiting for this one on disc for a long time. It's Stanley Kubrick's classic 1968 movie called 2001, A Space Odyssey, a movie that was made in widescreen and must be seen in widescreen, but was not available in letterbox format until right now. It looks great. Another fascinating film, The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, a British classic by Michael Powell. It has two soundtracks, and you can listen to either one. On the left track, you hear the movie itself. On the right track, you hear director Martin Scorsese discussing the film, which is one of his favorites, with Powell, the man who directed it. Here is Michael Powell revealing the secret 40 years later of how he used trickery to shoot one of his scenes. Powell reveals that of hundreds of the Nazi soldiers listening to the concert, most of them were plaster dummies. I had three different poses, sitting on the ground, standing up, and then they made about 50 of each and dressed them up in German uniforms and stuck them around. My third choice of something new on disc is a first, a 12-inch laser disc named Theater of the Imagination that is all audio, no picture, but on the audio, three different soundtracks on each side, totaling six hours of original radio broadcasts by Orson Welles. These tapes were thought to be completely lost until a year ago, when film historians Richard Wilson and Frank Beach have discovered them in Wilson's garage. Everybody heard Wells' famous War of the World broadcast, but it's not on this tape. Instead, we hear the famous Wells voice in radio dramatizations. Listen to the drama as he introduces Heart of Darkness. The Heart of Darkness could be described as a deliberate masterpiece or a downright incantation. Almost we are persuaded that there is something after all, something essential waiting for all of us in the dark areas of the world, aboriginally loathsome, immeasurable, and certainly nameless. The collection is available not only on Laserdisc, but also on ordinary audio cassettes. He sounds so mature there, and he was in his early 20s. He hadn't even directed Citizen Kane yet. Okay, coming up next, out of all the video gadgets we've looked at, we found the best. That's coming up. I think I'd like to have Gandhi. I really think that was a fine film. Continuing our Siskel and Ebert holiday video gift guide, Gene and I over the last couple of weeks looked at a lot of high-priced video hardware and other gimmicks, and most of the stuff, frankly, we thought was kind of useless, overpriced, or not for us. There is, however, one invention that I at least thought 
was useful, and that is the Mitsubishi Visitel Visual Telephone Display, which I have here in front of me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my esteemed colleague, Mr. Siskel, on this telephone, and you see this machine hooks up with the telephone so that when I get somebody at the other end, what I can do is send a picture of myself to the person I'm calling and receive back a picture from the other end. I don't know if Gene's there or not. Uh, the phone is still ringing. Yeah, who is it? Uh, it's your uh, your favorite film critic, me. And, That's not uh, true. Uh, it's not true. Where are you? I'm I'm in front of my Visitel telephone, and I'm in if front you're of mine. and if you're in front of yours, I am. Now, of course, Let's when you send the picture, like. Gene, there's a five-second delay in which you can't hear the other person. But what I'm going to do, you see, I've got there's a little television camera in mine. I know. And I lean forward and I look in until I get it just right, and then I push send. Mm -hmm. And then, oh look, you you're wearing glasses. Now you can't hear me. You're wearing glasses. Okay, now you can see me, right? Yeah. Okay. You're wearing glasses. Okay, but and you, you couldn't hear me while on. the picture came along, right? That's true. It okay. blanked out there for a second. Okay. You're wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Yes. Uh, you haven't lost any weight. Thank you. You have a sweater on yes, and a I sport do. jacket. Yes, just as the last time you saw me on the previous segment of this program. Right. <laughs> That's right. Okay, you didn't now, change your Okay, now why don't you try to send me a picture? You lean into the set there. I, I, Say. I don't need instructions now. I right. think I can do this myself. Okay, fine. You get posed so that we see you in all of your most handsomest possible appearance there. There. There he is. What a handsome guy. Look at that. How about that grin? <laughs> Look at that smirk. The guy who just won the state lottery. I'm telling you. You know what the great thing about this is, is that, uh, let's say you move to the big city from the small town. Mom and dad are worried about how you're doing. You just bought your first pair of store-bought shoes, so you can send that picture and you can send... Hey, look at that. Back on the farm, I'm, I'm doing okay in the big city. Or if you have a girlfriend on the coast, you can send her one of these. They're 400 bucks a piece. That's pretty interesting. And uh, be nice. That's the uh, shoe there on the left, I believe. They're very perceptive. Okay, yes. now, Roger, let's imagine, and this is an imagination, yes. that you sent me a gift. Let's say it's a watch that I have, okay? Right. I want to show been in the mail you. for a long time. Yeah, okay, here it is. Okay. I'm going to send it to you now. All 12 digits on this one. It's nice. See it? Uh, well, I hope you enjoy it, Gene. Okay. Now, I want to tell you, a friend of mine already has this machine, and he's using it in a legitimate way, I think. He, he sent his daughter off to school, freshman year, nervous, mm -hmm. cross-country, and he's able to stay in contact with her she, if she's okay. The other obvious test that would, I think it would be great, someone sick in a hospital across the country, far away from you, uh, this is a way to stay in communication. Yeah. And that almost brings back the price. This is uh, $400 a unit, $800 for a pair. They'll probably discount a little bit, but if you think about it, plane tickets back and forth. This machine is actually worth it. The picture phone comes alive. I think it's great. Okay. So I guess we agree on this one. So long, Gene. Bye, Rog. When we come back, Gene and Roger look at the latest in children's and music videos. The two parts of The Godfather. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I can really watch those again and again for some reason. Their holiday video gift guide. Gene and I usually look at movies, nothing but movies, lots of movies. But for this show, we've been looking at some other kinds of things you can find on home video. And two of the most popular categories, especially for holiday gifts, are videos for kids and music videos. Whenever you're buying a video, you ask yourself, how often are we really going to look at this? But with children's movies, known in the business as kid vid, you know the kids are going to be looking at them again and again and again and again. And that's the case with my first choice. My list begins with a new video that's already number two on the all-time home video bestseller list, Walt Disney's Cinderella. <laughs> Next on my list, a cute tall tale called Pecos Bill from a series called Storybook Classics. I like the quietly humorous artwork here by Tim Raglan, and I especially like the spirit with which the story is told by Robin Williams. He looked down at Bill from his horse and said, Well, you're as naked as a jaybird, partner. Why in tarnation you're running around without clothes? I had some fun watching my third choice, which is from a series of tapes for Boy Scouts, and it's about how to become a tenderfoot. The first aid lesson brought back a lot of memories. Okay. First thing you have to do is press down hard with your bare hand. And then take your neckerchief no, wait, and... Wait, wait, you don't have a neckerchief. Um, grab those two pieces of rag. One for the pad and one for the bandage. 
And my favorite moment later on is when the guy says, now remember, Scouts, the first thing in first aid is site security. That means you can't help anyone if you're not safe. In other words, don't stand in the middle of the road and get run over while you're putting on the That's tourniquet. That's a very good suggestion. I watched the first <laughs> class tape, and, you know, at first I was a little skeptical of it because some of the kids have glasses on and, oh, they're not very trendy, you know, the Scout uniforms aren't all that trendy. But at the end, when they gave out the badges, the real emblems, for the first class thing, mm -hmm. it was kind of moving, and it was kind—I was uh, a little tingle there because I was a first class Scott, and these kids really do learn some What's things. What's wrong with wearing glasses? One of the best children's series is the Disney sing-along songs. The fourth volume is out now. It's called You Can Fly, and the title tune is, of course, from Peter Pan. Lyrics by Sammy Kahn, music by Sammy Fain. series in my home is an adventure series with comedy from Fisher Price featuring a brother and sister Max and Jennifer having all sorts of adventures in things that go vroom they travel on every imaginable conveyance come on guys this is our stop whoa big city here we come for teenagers here's a really strange exercise tape hosted by Alyssa Milano from TV's Who's the Boss leading two friends in an exercise program you can tell she's the star. She's wearing the most revealing outfit. Hips up and hold the ankles and just a little bounce. One, two, three, four. That tape is called Teen Steam, and she suggests using exercise as a way of diffusing pressure from parents and teachers and friends. But intertwined among the exercise sessions is some hot dancing, which really suggests the reason to work out is to get your body in shape for dirty dancing. I'm not so sure who this tape is intended for, but the exercises are legitimate. It's just that the way she's dressed. And, uh... I've always thought I should do an exercise tape in which first I'm sitting in a chair, then lying on the couch, and then watching some TV. You know? That would explain a lot of things. Yeah. Yes. Now let's take another look at a popular video category, another video category, music on video. There are a lot of rock concerts available on video right now, and one of the most popular is Ciao Italia, the tape of a live TV broadcast of a Madonna concert from Italy. One of the most popular categories of music on video consists of grand opera on tape and disc. I prefer to watch operas on laser disc because of the better sound quality. And one of my favorite operas on disc is The Barber of Seville, where the cameras allow you to get close enough to enjoy the marvelous good humor and clowning around the facial expressions here by soprano Maria Ewing in a scene like this. <laughs> Even with binoculars, when you go to the opera, you can't usually see the facial expressions on the singer, so it's great to have something like this where you can see what they look like. I absolutely singing. agree. It's valuable also in concerts, as you mentioned. I saw the Madonna concert. I wasn't a mile back, but this really let me see her, how hard she was working, and she does a great job. Mm -hmm. I came across two music videos that I can recommend. The first is from England's popular rock and roll show of the 60s called Ready, Steady, Go. I'm gonna let you down. Entertaining is an hour-long HBO special on tape featuring legendary ladies of rock and roll, including Ronnie Spector of the Ronettes, singing Be My Baby with Melinda Carlisle and Grace Slick backing her up. Another highlight on that tape, Leslie Gore with a terrific rendition of her first record. You know, It's My Party is not considered a classic rock and roll song by most people, and Leslie Gore was laughed at by some people, but this time when she sings, she does a better job, I think, singing that song now than she did back then. I, I like the whole tape. I turn it up real loud, and the energy from the stage and from the tape was terrific. I played it twice. It's probably, <laughs> the, of the music tapes, I would go out and buy that right now. Okay. Coming up, we'll have the addresses of where you can send to get those old vintage TV cassettes, and also... 
We're going to try again to get that train to work. you got to get it on the tracks. I guess I'd like Casablanca on video. Or Angels with Dirty Faces, I like that, too. I think it's all set here. You have to look underneath. No, this one isn't on yet, see? You've got to get it on the tracks, both wheels, there and there. Now start it up and okay. let's see if we go. Okay. All right, now as we promised, here are the distributors of those vintage TV shows on video. The train is going. Rama and the Jungle and Mama come from Movie Craft. That's Post Office Box 438, Orland Park, Illinois, 60462. Ding Dong School comes from Video Resources, New York, 220 West 71st Street, New York City, New York, 10023. Thanks for joining us on our holiday video gift guide. And as we always say this time of year, season screenings, everyone. A great gift idea for VCR owners. The bigger than ever 1989 edition of Roger Ebert's movie Home Companion. Iron cologne for men. Rugged, sensitive, sexy. The clean, refreshing fragrance with a compelling warmth. After work or after workout, Daisy Turbo Spa combines powerful water massage and tingling aeration to turn your tub into a personal whirlpool. Tap and Sure Quick Space Saver Microwave is perfect for kitchens where space is at a premium. Tap and Touch solid state controls and automatic temperature probe furnished by Tappan. Put your face down. Get in the shot. He had to do it. I didn't do it. He I didn't do it on purpose. He had to do it. I didn't. No. It was an accident. He had to do it. It was an accident. I didn't know it was going that fast. 47-year-old infant. Listen, it was, it was 46.